Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel, thanks for tuning in. Right, here we've got, um, I don't know if I'll call this part 2A or part 3, but uh, yeah, whatever. Um, have a quick chat about this model and um, and then we'll we'll get going once I've got some advice. If you remember, I'm, I'm asked, I've asked some questions about the uh, dihedral on this, on this aircraft and also of the question about the elevators. Um, I need to get on and get the canopy masked up and get it fitted um do some probably have to do some filler work around the front but then saying that the way the rest of this kit is fitted together um it's probably going to be a lovely fit uh but yeah all the um mr servicer is all rubbed down now and and uh lovely i just need to get some primer on these joints to see what they look like um engine cowlings have i've got a beautiful fit on them as i showed you in the last video i put some mr servicer around and removed it with acrylic thinners so it leaves the panel line behind but it doesn't leave any gaps um yeah on the whole i'm, I'm really pleased with this it's uh, it's coming together really well um just want to give my revel paint another little promotion uh this is actually something i've done for years i bought this god dear there's no date on it or anything but i, I must have had this paint for I mean, I've been living in this house for 10 years. I know I bought it before I moved here. So it's, it's probably 12 years old, this paint. And you can see it's still absolutely fine. That's how thick Revell paint is. Yeah, it's um, upside down. It's uh, it's incredible stuff. It really is. Um, and literally, you just put one little spot of a paintbrush in your, in your uh, mixing cup. And then a couple of drops of the... Um, pretty much any thinner I think it all seems to work and it thins with water beautifully as well and then once you've thinned it with water it's really hard wearing I, I was saying to someone in fact I can show you now this is my little cheap plastic mixing pot um, and I mixed up this is the colour for the seat uh, and this is the colour for those oxygen bottles inside here's the black um, and these are the colours I mixed up with some water to to paint the inside the paint the interior left it in there for you know 20 minutes half an hour as you do whatever under a hot tap rinse it out comes out doesn't it oh no it's really hard wearing and look how tough it is i mean if that was tamiya paint mixed with water that would just scratch off it's um it's look <laughs> i mean i can't even look if i really work it i can scrape it off with the back of those tweezers so it's uh it's, and that's mixed with water, guys. That's not with any solvents. That is mixed with water. That way, nail can just scratch it off of there. But I mean, I'm really trying. I can't rub it off. Um, yeah, this Revell paint, it's something else. But um, yeah, I digress. Uh, this is a colour. It's um, 36310. And it's uh, it's called Lufthansa Gelb, Lufthansa Yellow. And I find it absolutely perfect for propellers because it's a real rich sort of deep yellow and you know yellow is always a completely utter nightmare to cover so what i've done here a couple of quick runs over with some tamiya flat white and then um some of this thinned over the white and it gives you that rich yellow color that you're looking for um without having to put loads of paint on uh now obviously if i kept going it would get darker and darker and darker it would be this lufthansa color but I find it absolutely perfect for that. So, yeah, these Revell paints, wow, pretty impressive stuff. So, anyway, enough of waffling. Oh, one more thing I want to say. Um, I got in touch with Airfix regarding my um, clear sprues in the Lancaster kits, as I mentioned. And they came back to me and said, yeah, can I please send them the, a photograph of the, the sticker on the back of the box and the photograph of the parts and everything. And they've come back to me and they've said, yeah, mate, they're all like that. So, OK, so they're all like that. That's it. So I've replied saying, um, I can't believe you're actually telling me you're knowingly selling substandard products and doing nothing about improving your quality. That is atrocious. So uh, I, I wait with bated breath to see what they come back with. But um, can you imagine Tamiya or Wing Not Wing saying that? You know, I'm sorry you've got lines in your care parts, but it's part of the process, so don't worry about it. You know, it's absolutely crazy. So, um, yeah, bear that in mind. If you're going to get yourself a 72nd scale Lancaster, they've all got dodgy clear parts. Right, enough waffle in there. Sorry I went on and on and on a bit, didn't I? Uh, anyway, um, 
Okay, so what have I done? I decided, I mean, I had one person come back to me, thank you, about the dihedral issue. And he was saying, give it more dihedral. Well, I, I was looking at it and I thought maybe it was a bit too much. But then the wing was quite flat without any. So what I've done, um, I, sh I should have filmed this, I'm sorry, guys. I've only glued the front edge at the moment. The back's not glued in yet. But if, if you can see in there, what I've done, I glued some white plastic card to the fuselage, 10 thou thick, 0.25 millimeters. Glued that to the fuselage, each side, and then let that go off, and then trimmed and sanded it round the edges. Then I've sanded it back until I get a nice fit, so the wing just slots over the fuselage nicely. And then what I found was, actually the, the kit answered the question for me. This join here, there was it was like this either side so obviously it did need some more dihedral but when I close the gap up you can see it's it's come out nice and even and the dihedral is nice and square and everything's cool so what I've done I put some um, Tammy extra thin in there quite a lot of it actually and then clamp that overnight what was it now it's Saturday morning 9th of February um, 2019 so I clamp that overnight so now this front leading edge here this joint here is all solid and the back is still floating. So what I want to do now is get this rear end glued in. Not sure about this panel line here either. This panel line sort of dog legs around something. Um, I want to get this glued in. And there's some little uh, panels that go in there I need to put in. Um, so I want to get this glued in, clamped in place. And then I'll start worrying about this joint. What I'm going to do about it. I think probably put plenty of extra thin in and then clamp it all. And then let it go off overnight again and then some mr surfacer in there you know cotton bud over the top and i think that'll be that joint taken care of um but the more i look at this model I've, I've been looking at the canopy as you can see here this is all out of shape here this is too round and as a result the whole canopy kind of looks fat so at the end of the day this isn't a very pretty spitfire anyway so uh, but i may as well do my best with it i suppose um, but it is an out-of-the-box build and it's a lot cheaper than the Tamiya one. I've now ordered the Revell one. Um, I don't know if any of you cop follow Frankie Day models. Frankie Day models is a channel on here, an American guy. Built some amazing models, card models, ships and everything. And we're taking a look at his channel. Uh, he's a crazy guy. He's always got a great big fat cigar in his mouth. But he... Um, he told me what he's mentioned on his um on his channel about a group build for Spitfires. So I've now ordered the uh the 32nd scale Spitfire from Revell, the Mark the Mark II. Um which is that's got inaccuracy issues as well, but I think its overall shape is better than this one, I I think. Um probably if you did a um a mix of the two, you could probably get a perfect Spitfire out of the box. Uh, but that one is actually available from Antics, and I think it was 17 quid. I mean, it's about £23 everywhere else. I think it was £17, so I've ordered it from Antics. Um, so yeah, if, if you want one of those Spitfires and you want to join in with uh, Frankie's buddy build or group build, then uh, get yourself one, get it from Antics. And if you do, mention that, you, you, uh, that I put you their way. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get this rear end glued in now. And then we'll start looking at this joint. Okay, guys, I'm. Um, this part of the video is sort of aimed at the the newer guys to the hobby. Really, I'm going to show you. How I'm going to get over this problem. Um, the fit is okay. It's uh, it all goes together quite nicely. But as you can hear there, it sort of all clips into place. And what you've got to be careful of, if you just push it in and start gluing it, you can see that it's up here. It's up here. It's under the surface there. And it's sort of up here. So what we need to do is be a little bit careful about how we glue it. Now, if I just go straight in and clamp this down here and start gluing it, then that's going to stay up. So what I want to do is gently nudge it in. And what we can see is this is the first... See, that's gone straight under there. But if I nudge it in, that's the first area that becomes flush. And if we put some glue on it, it probably won't be so um, willing to just pop in. And in case you're wondering, why is my glue black? Um, if you go over to High Altitude Scale Modelling, Brett has done a review on the new um, black glue from Mr Hobby. 
and uh, I thought well I'm just going to put some some uh, XF1 in my um, Tamiya Extra Thin so I've done that and now I've got a black glue and I can watch it go along you can see it it's gone along that joint whereas normally you wouldn't know and it's great for fuselage joints and stuff but um yeah and people some people say uh yeah but what you what you're doing you're in, you know you're impairing the uh, strength of the glue well the way I look at it if I wanted to glue something to there I would put some tammy extra thin and I know that the glue would work through the paint so on that joint there would probably be like 40% paint 60% glue well I've put like two little brushfuls of paint in there so in there is probably you know less than 1% paint so I can't see it's going to affect the strength of the glue at all but it means I can see where it's gone and it's it's a it's a good little tip that you might want to do yourself and um so you can you can see here the glue's gone all the way along that joint otherwise you wouldn't know and you could end up with a dry joint and then you don't find out in case you don't know this something else another tip if you start sanding your joint and you whoo, if you start sanding your joint and you get a white line appear where you're sanding that means there's no glue in there so you go back over the liquid cement and um sometimes also just give it a little score with a knife or something and and get some glue in there uh it's you know it's really important on fuselage seams and bomb halves and everything and you'll often find it on wing leading edges you'll get a white line so um doing this putting this black dye in the glue sort of stops that happening so what i'm going to do now as you notice this side isn't isn't down at all but this side's nice and flush now so now i can push that in so that that goes flush Just gonna get some more glue in there. And you can see if you look in the, I don't know if you catch it in the light, you can see it's all moving. I'm just gonna hold it there and let the glue go. And I'm not pushing it in because I know that it will pop in and go sub flush. And then I'll have to sand everything and blend it all in and you know, you're better off to have this a little proud and blend it into the fuselage than than have to try and establish this edge again because once you start sanding that away you'll lose the shape in that plane and when you look down on it you'll lose that shape as well so you really want this all easily blendable and not have to do too much work so there we go and something you might want to do here little dab of super glue in there to hold it uh, there's also a little infill panel which goes in here but I want to make sure this is right before I start messing with any panels I ought to need, to need to be getting that canopy on as well as well really I've got it masked up I haven't actually cut the masking yet but I've got the tape on there so there we go that's that side done and it's my nails are coming on guys so uh, things are looking a bit better. What I do for you, eh? It's amazing. What I do for you lot. So there we go. I'm going to let that go off now. And then I'll come back and do the other side. Welcome back. So they've glued both sides of these now. And they've been clamped in place. And left for a couple of hours or an hour or so to, um, to go hard. So that's all done now. Now I want to deal with this little join here. And if you see there's a little gap there. <clears throat> I could put some super glue in there, but I, I don't want to because I don't like using the stuff unless I'm using it for actually filling a like a seam line or something. I don't like using super glue at all. Um, so I've got some 5,000 plastic card here and I'm just going to stick that into that gap like so. And push it in as hard as I can until it's actually in there. And now when I, I can actually trim that off. a bit better than that actually there we go so that's in there now so I can just take some of my Tammy extra thin just touch it on that capillary around capillary around into that joint and then just put some extra thin down here so it goes into that joint where the joint is good and that can be left Right, so now we can go on and fit the uh, the belly under the front. And we can see that is an absolutely gorgeous fit. 
Now on the sides here, it looks like it needs to be squeezed in a bit. It looks like, oh no, it is actually fine. So yeah, the fit is, this is unbelievably good. If you look at that, holding that in place, look how good it fits. The side covers, the wing, everything, it fits beautifully. I think this actually fits better than the Tamiya one. I'll probably get slated for saying that. Not allowed to say such a thing, are you? But it certainly does fit very, very nice. Okay, so that's some glue on there. I'm just going to put some little bit of glue on the front. And there we go, we can see with this black dye, you can watch it capillary up into that joint. See that? I'm not going to push down on it because I don't want the glue to ooze out. So I just leave that like that. And being that it has actually gone onto the engine cover, I'm just going to put a little dab there and a little dab there. That's it, that's the front all finished. So now we're starting to look like a Spitfire. Lovely. I'm happy with that. So then, so we've got that done. I need to like let that go off now and um, then we'll probably get some Mr. Surfacer on it and blend it all and everything. Probably have to do a bit of re-riveting. Um, I've also, as you can see, I've put some Mr. Surfacer around these. A tip for you if you're building this kit, this here, these actually glue into recesses. Um, you can see them here. They glue into recesses in the wing. And this here is actually a bit small. I didn't notice when I fitted it. It's a bit small. So really you want to put a bit of like 10th hour maybe even half a mil plastic card on the back of that so that it sits away a bit because it's actually sub flush with the wing and it's supposed to be a um, a sort of riveted on flange I believe or maybe even bolt on um, but yeah so I suppose now I could actually go on and uh, take care of that get my trusty X20A and a cotton bud Give it a good rub. I think X28 is a little bit um, not aggressive enough for this. Let's try. Um, I think what I've been using lately is the uh, AK. AK Real Colour High Compatibility Thinner. I think this one works quite well. Yeah, there we go. I must pop over to Tesco's later on to see if I can find any cotton buds with plastic um, before they all sell out. I think there's been a world, um, there we go, just give that a really good hard rub because I want to make sure I get all the Mr. Surface out of the rivet detail. And really pushing that cotton bud into the corner. And you can see this AK stuff is more aggressive than the, than the Tamiya. Done. Get the cleat into the cotton bud, back in the thinners. I always find if you wet it first and leave it for a couple of minutes, it comes off a lot easier.
and that will take care then of those uh, those joints. These little infill panels here, I'm not fitting them yet. I'm not going to fit them until the wing is actually properly in place because there's a bit of a fit, fit issue with them. I'll show you that when I come to it. I'm hoping to have this um, build and video finished today and then tomorrow we can get on with the painting. Um, in fact, I won't be able to finish it today, will I? Because I'm going to have to leave the wings to dry. So. There we go. Give that a quick wipe down. And that's that. And that's those now all blended in. Be careful about the build up of uh, Mr. Surfacer, which will show us a ridge under the paintwork. Give that a quick sound before I uh, paint the bottom. But um, there we go, we can see that that is all, uh, all lovely. It's going to need some Mr. Surfacer down here. Um, and it's going to need some around there. So I may as well wait until I've done that joint. Um, so I'll put some Mr. Surfacer around there before that's done. That's all done now. Wait for that to go off. In the meantime, I can be looking at these wings. Now I've got a bit of an issue at the back here where they just need to come up just a touch. So that'll have to be clamped in place while the glue dries. And I've also got to find some way of actually pulling these wings together. Um, I suppose I could use masking tape, but I'm not sure if it'll be strong enough. I'll come back in a second and I'll see what I've done. Okay, there we go, guys. I've got a uh, magnifying glass there all in the middle to equalise the, <clears throat> the, the tape so it doesn't pull one way. If you have the tape directly on the fuselage, you could pull this wing harder than that one whereas the way it is now they're, they're both equal so you're you're pretty much guaranteed to get equal force on either side and i've put some liquid poly down in there and also um sorry liquid poly tell me extra thin and i had to break a golden rule and i had to put a tiny drop of super glue in the back and hold it in place because that lower that lower edge of the wing wanted to be uh wanted to be below below the surface so that's all done now and going off. I'm going to have to leave that at least three or four hours, I guess, probably overnight, actually, uh, before I start treating that with anything. Um, and then I'll probably give it another quick run of, um, of, of Mr. Oh, Mr. Surfacer. Um, Tammy Extra Thin and then a, a quick go over with Mr. Surfacer. I'll probably rip, uh, mask off the rivet detail and, uh, and then the cotton bud trick and, um, and we're away. Then I think we're pretty much ready for paint. I've got to add this scoop in the bottom here. Um, here's all the parts I've got left. Um, oh, I resprayed these wheels in Vallejo Metal Color. Sorry, no, not Vallejo, AK Extreme um, Aluminium rather than the uh, Metal Color. Um, and I've got the air intake there to go in the bottom. We've got the spinner and the prop. Um, got the sight glass to go in or the machine gun sight. Uh, choice of round or um, oblong mirrors to go on top of the canopy. Pito tube. I don't know what that is. I'll have to have a look. Might be part of the engine. Um, these here are the pins that go on the outside of the wheel to hold them on the undercarriage legs. Um, I'm not going to use them. I don't know what these are for here. And there's these two tubes that go in the back of the exhaust. I'm not sure if they should be there or not. We've got some clear parts here that I don't think I need. There's a part there for the machine gun. There's the light that goes on the back and there's a light I think goes in the base. Um, and those there look like they've already got silver paint on the back of them. That'll be great in the spares box, those two there, if I don't need them for this. Um, and that's that. And then I've got here, I've got the ailerons, the two little infill panels, exhaust, undercarriage legs. And the spinner back plate so we're pretty much done see you in a minute just quickly want to show you guys the uh, the propeller with that lovely Revell Lufthansa yellow paint on it just looks I hope you'll agree it just looks so right um, discovered that years ago and it's uh, it's something I've been doing ever since when I actually 
finish and model that is I can't remember the last time I painted a propeller to be quite honest with you um, I should be ashamed of myself and hopefully this channel will actually make me start finishing stuff <laughs> okay so I think this is going to be the last segment of uh, part 2a so uh, after this I think we can call it a day and uh, we can call the build pretty much done ready for paint um, so what have I done right I've masked and painted the canopy parts now this kit has got the separate front armor on the um, on the front screen so obviously I wanted to paint that before I fitted because there's a frame in behind there that needs to be painted so um, I've painted that in behind there I thought I may as well do the whole thing then I can glue it on and then it'll obviously it'll get painted again when I paint the uh, the fuselage um, and then we've got the armor plate there so that's done um, I've masked up and fitted the rear part of the the glazing here and now I'm going to do a bit of work on just um, blending that in as soon as the glue's dried. Um, I actually fitted that with uh, Tamiya Extra Thin, so uh, that's gone down very nice. Uh, now I need to just, I didn't bother finishing off the fuselage in this area because the, um, because the, uh, you know, the, the, the glazing was going to affect where it actually, uh, you know, what it was going to look like. Um, so that's that done. Uh, the prop is um, I've, I've reworked the area out there after I painted it so I've got that all nice and smoothed out and left a nice tidy seam uh, here's the box of other bits that have got to be added there's the, the main canopy I've also just gone around with that with some paint just to make sure I've got paint under the edges and also remember to paint in here with your green because the the canopy goes on like so and you'll see that ledge inside I'm not sure if it's correct or not but this upper area of the plane is so far out, I'm not going to sort of worry about accuracy anymore. <laughs> um, now these little panels that go under the wing here, they're a bit of a, a bit of a swine of a fit. Um, they just want to fall in uh, because the panel, the, the part in here, ugh, this part in here that it sits on is a bit too deep. So what I'm doing, I get a piece of, I've got a piece of 10,000 plastic card I've, I've cut. So I'm just going to put some of my... Um, my extra thin in there place this piece of plastic card in the on top of there that should stay and then I should be able to fold it over and I would recommend anybody doing this kit make sure you do oh, I've pushed it in now make sure you do this bit of work before you put the glazing on because if anything does fall in it'll probably end up sticking to the inside of your um the inside of your canopy which you don't want look at that the other one went absolutely doddle like a doddle and, and a, went with a doddle should i say and this one's being a swine because i'm on camera um so that's in there now just to stop that and then i should be able to just fit this now and push it in and that will sit there lovely flush and it'll go in there and then it will end up flush with the I've got the flaps a little bit sort of low they they probably should be further up into the wing but like I said with all that inaccuracy on the top um, I think really worrying about accuracy on the underside is uh, is taking the mick um, so there we go now this area here I've sanded out I'm gonna have to put some mister service in and I blend it out I'm not gonna worry about scribing and riveting and stuff this line here is actually out of line with that line there. Um, I'm not going to fuss about that. And I'll probably re redo the rivets and stuff, but I'm not going to worry about making sure the lines line up and everything. After all, when it's sat this way, I mean, if, if it looks awful here, what's the point in having it looking perfect here? Um, I've put this scoop on. I've painted around here to see what the uh, Mr. Surfacer looked like, where it was all done, and that all looks fine. They look like part of the wing now rather than separate parts glued on um this has been like this for a few hours now so the tape's all there um i'm not going to take the tape off until the morning but when we put the prop on we can see she looks bloody lovely and what i've done i've not bothered with the part that goes inside that holds the prop on it'll just sit there and it's just one layer of mask of uh, tamiya masking tape on on the actual spindle and the spindle is glued solid to stop it all wobbling about um, and I've had a, a lady has kindly um, messaged me and told me that the these pipes here are actually um, I think she said they were seven eighth or inch and seven eighth 
pipes that take hot air from the exhaust to feed it into the wings to stop the cannons freezing. So um, that was very, very good. And thank you very much. I have replied to your, uh, or responded to your message. Thank you. So I'll be fitting those. Um, I assume they would have been black and had some rust on them, I, I guess, on a, on a plane that's seen a few hours. Um, so yeah, that's about, that's about it really. Uh, obviously fin elevators are on. I've yet to put the ailerons in, but I can't do that until this, this tape comes off. So as soon as the tape comes off, I'll clean up this joint. Um, then I'll get it ready for primer and that will be part three where we start putting primer and paint on. Um, and then obviously once this is off as well, I've got to put the gun sight in, which is built up now with its, with its glazed part. And the front canopy will go on with that thing. I think I'm going to stick that with future. Um, don't know quite what to do. I'm probably going to have to unmask it, stick it on and then mask it up again. Uh, I really wish they'd moulded that canopy in one piece rather than having that separate piece of front armour. Um, seems a bit daft doing it that way. But anyway, there we go. Um, so I think we'll call that a day for the build. That is the build complete. Uh, it's now, what is it? It's just gone 8 o'clock, 20 hundred, 8 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, February the 9th, 2019. So hopefully tomorrow, um, or probably Monday now, I'll have a video up. Um, well, no, it probably won't be Monday. It's probably going to be Tuesday or Wednesday because the next video will be all about the priming and the painting and everything. So I've actually mixed some Tamiya paint. I was going to use Ravel. I've changed my mind. Um, and then I was going to use the Mr. Hobby. But I want to keep that for other stuff. So I've mixed up. I, I did an online search for the um, 148 scale Tamiya Mark 1, the new one, and seen what colours they recommended. And they recommended a mix for the brown of five parts. What is it? Five parts XF52 to one part XF59. So there's the brown. And for the green, they recommend five parts XF62 to one part XF61. So there's the brown and there's the green. So they're going to look pretty cool. The one thing I will say, I had a quick look at my... Um, HK Models Lancaster and yes they got it wrong I, I, I know you find it hard to believe but they got it wrong um, they're saying use XF81 for the green well that color is actually dark green 2 which I think was a later RAF color and you can see it's quite a lot different to what Tamiya recommending and it's also quite a lot different to the Mr. Hobby which is here as you can see, um, three different colours. <laughs> so, you know, which one do you believe? This one to me looks a lot more realistic. But then it doesn't really matter. Who knows what colour they were? They would have faded. Um, the paint in those days was bloody awful. It would have faded and rubbed off and, and all sorts. So, but I, I just want to get it sort of somewhere handy and of course the other beauty of Mr Hobby if I don't do use that is it goes with a semi-gloss so you don't have to gloss it to put your decals on so anyway there we have it um that's it for part 2a uh so please like please subscribe um if you haven't already and if you have already subscribed thank you very much and I'll be back uh, maybe tomorrow today is saturday i'm going to try and get this up tonight um i'll be back maybe tomorrow sunday with another video on probably the 72nd scale lancaster and i'm also going to get some more work done on the 32nd scale lancaster and next week or this week i'm going to try and get that bloody a7 tank finished i keep telling myself to go and do it but i got an airplane thing at the moment so um thanks for watching and i'll see you all soon Bye bye